Hello and welcome to Man Plays Game. Marari and Co. made a game called Darklight, and I played it. Darklight is a cyberpunk supernatural themed metroidvania that boasts Souls-like gameplay and some unique combat mechanics. This game may look dour at first, but has a charm that shines through as soon as you start stomping mutant zombie heads. The amount of detail put into the art and the soundtrack really sell the 2D side-scrolling action that reminds me of little-known SNES import titles from Japan. While there are only two very large levels available, Marari and company show there is a whole world already planned out. The story so far is simple yet effective. The world has ended, in some kind of supernatural sci-fi Armageddon, leaving the surface of the Earth overrun with dark hellish abominations and mankind living in underground cities. After time, even those cities fell, and now, one of the last enclaves of humans lives in a cargo bay, huddled together and running out of resources. That's where you come in. As a dark hunter, you venture into the cities and beyond, in search of life-saving technology that can provide for the few remaining survivors. As you travel through the large cities, you collect audio logs that give foreshadowing to areas and enemies you will encounter, and as you explore, it is hard to ignore the amount of detail put into the world around you. Darklight seems to use some pre-rendered elements animated with a low frame rate to give the impression of stop-motion animation. I don't know if it's intentional, but this is mixed with smoother animations giving an uneasy feeling to some of the areas and creatures, which serves the horror aspect well. This is all set against a backdrop of cyberpunky yellows, blues, and grays with lots of silhouetted scenery. You start the game in the cargo bay, surrounded by mass survivors huddled together among what seems to be the remains of giant monsters and robots, giving some idea of what horrible conflict led to humanity's current whereabouts. The bay is pretty vacuous and gray, with some spikes of color found in the different upgrade areas, and a launch area that has some design elements that remind me of H.R. Geiger or Sid Mead. The second area and first level is the Undercity that sports a sprawling urban waste in the background while you scale the gutted corpses of what was once skyscrapers. You can also gain access to the much more difficult Underground, where the vast open city becomes a claustrophobic labyrinth saturated with greens and browns. The second level is the City of Flesh, and it pushes the more monstrous concepts of the game. Strange organics consuming and corrupting what used to be the shining beacon of humanity's achievement the level design feels more medieval meets sci-fi in this red-washed hellscape, reminding me of early Castlevania. The music is a mix of creep and camp that I found very fitting for this particular game. My favorite song is the Cargo Bay theme. The guitar striking and echoing against a ghostly silence accompanied by waves of heavy horn wailing is a great example of suspense building. Even though you are safe, it feels dangerous because of the soundtrack. The opposite side of the spectrum is the boss music for The Butcher in level 1. Reminiscent of SNES boss music, there is a fast, tribalistic beat that gives the boost to the encounter, but removes any amount of creepiness. I think it fits very well considering how the fight is presented, and so far the soundtrack fits the need of the scene, despite the variety in tones. Just look at this fight! Listen to it! Doesn't it just feel like some action game from the 90s, but with supremely updated visuals? Seriously, I can't get past the perfect mix of these two different styles. And where the mix shines the most is where you want it, the gameplay. This game is challenging but enjoyable. The character is able to move, duck, roll, counter, and double jump. The double jump is great to have, straight from the beginning. It makes sense for the sprawling levels and gives the player incentive to explore more. The maps are non-linear, which allows for the player to find their own way, which is also great for explorers. And as you find your way around, you find beautiful neon portals that warp you to other parts of the world or back to the safety of the cargo bay. Resting at a portal will replenish your health and, like Dark Souls, respawn all the enemies. Checking in at a portal also makes it your respawn point, so exploration is not as tedious. The combat is as straightforward as the platforming. There is a melee, a ranged attack, and a third attack in the form of grenades or turrets found from enemy drops or you can buy them in town. A unique element is the drone that follows you. You can control it separately from your character and use it to shock enemies, stunning them. The drone serves another purpose as well. The light it admits reveals hidden objects and enemies. I think this was to be used as a horror element, and I'm an easy scare, but I feel like it missed the mark. While a cool mechanic, and unique, revealing a monster right on top of me never made me jump or feel creeped out, it did make me swear a lot though. I mean, when you think there's only one enemy and two more pop out, it becomes a different kind of scary. 
Another unique element is that all combat movements use a certain amount of energy that is shown in a bar right underneath the health bar. Unlike other Metroidvanias where spamming attack is commonplace, every shot, roll, slash, and stun uses a set amount of energy, and once your energy is drained, you can no longer avoid attacks or fight back until the gauge refills, except for the counterattack function which, while not costing any energy, feels muddy in the timing, but it's serviceable once you get used to it. Conserving energy makes planning your loadout and being efficient with attacks essential to survival. Luckily, you can upgrade your damage to capitalize more on each hit, and you can also upgrade both your health and your energy. This is where the shards come into play. Shards are dropped by enemies, and you can change them into hard cash at banks scattered throughout the world. And remember, if you die before exchanging, you lose all the shards you've collected. Besides cash, to upgrade your weapons and health, you're also going to need specific items from enemies. And it's definitely something you have to grind for, and I found myself grinding for items and shards more than anything else. Some of these upgradable items are elemental gems. Collect three of a kind, and you can give a weapon specific abilities tied to that element. The best example is three ice gems that make your weapon freeze enemies. This is amazingly helpful, and I wish I hunted for gems earlier in my playthrough. Again, it was a grind, but it was so satisfying to confidently move around knowing I could handle all enemies. Darklight has a bunch of charm on top of being a truly challenging game. Even when you get used to the enemy's attack patterns, one mistake left my heart racing and audibly swearing at the screen. I cannot wait for the full version to be realized, but until then, I'm giving Darklight a 4 out of 5 because it is a great combination of retro and current game styles and shows that there will be an even bigger world once the full version is out. Seriously, try this game out if you dig Metroidvanias. If you like my opinion, tell me in the comments. And if you don't like my opinion, you can also tell me in the comments. Thanks for watching, and take care.